some YouTubers may have multiple, multiple fishes, um, aquariums, beautiful big fish rooms. And I used to have all that stuff too. I cut back a lot on my aquariums and I pretty much keep, I try to keep rare Central American cichlids. There are some that aren't rare, um, but their beauty, um, just, I can't, I can't deny them. I don't necessarily have a fish room. What I have is a fish collection. This is a um, red dragon, red fader cross breed. And um, um, it doesn't have a nuchal hump. So does that mean it's a female or is it just a uh, red dragon flower horn that doesn't have a nuchal hump? I don't know, but the colors on it is striking. You're probably thinking to yourself, yo, what's up with all the algae? Honestly, I think the algae looks cool against the colors of the fish. That's the only reason for it. I got some special uh, food from um, the interweb on Amazon. It's supposed to be, it's a uh, platinum, it's Okiko, it's called Okiko Head Huncher and Color and Color Faster. So apparently this food is specially uh, designed for flower horns to um, enhance the color and grow out the nuchal hump, which some people like to call it a... Uh, but I don't. The fish loves the food, but obviously it's not doing much for its uh, nuchal hump. I think people just like saying, I mean, you can call it. Okay, okay, I know, I get it, I get it. Listen, I know I'm gonna hear a lot in the comments about how big these fish are gonna get and how the tanks that I have them in are not adequate enough, but I got plans to do something about that in the future. So so I wanna express my feelings about about all this, but but I'm having trouble, okay? I'm not good at the, the mushy stuff. So I asked a friend um, to, to explain how I feel from me, by him, to you. Sorry, until recently, I think I was doing a pretty good job. And what I did was inexcusable. I am very sad and very ashamed of what I've done. My mother and my spiritual teachers have taught me way better than that. I'm truly, truly sorry, and that I wasn't able to handle the situation both differently and better. Call it so many things, you know, nuclear hump, bump, lump, all that, but <laughs> I think people just like really like calling it the, um... <laughs> All right, this is my female uh, yellow fire mouth. And of course, her fly. Look at all the little babies. I'm actually in the process of, um, I had to remove the male because she was whooping his tail. Security! Security! Never mind. Never mind, security. Um, even though he's a little bit bigger, she her mothering instincts were way too strong, and I had to. I think he was okay. So here's the deal: this is a 20 gallon, right? 20 gallon high. Look at all these guys. I think they were just hounding the male so much that he just decided he was going to eat a couple of them, and she decided, oh heck no! Nah. So she started whooping up on him. So I removed him. I put him in my 75 out. You know, I'll get to that 75 a little bit later, but um, I'm also going to have to remove her actually because. Even though she's way more protective than he was, had way more of a, a maternal instinct than he did, look at these guys. There's just too many of them. And eventually they're gonna hound her, they're gonna stress her out. So actually after I'm done with this video, or you know what, I might do it during this video, um, put her in the um, other tank that I'm gonna put him in and they could continue their baby making processes over and over and over again. But uh, look at it, let's, let's, you know what, and what I feed up, <laughs> I've never once fed these guys, these babies, um, brine shrimp or live brine shrimp. I, I, I did feed them frozen brine shrimp when they would just hatch. But since then, I went with crush um, fish flakes, high protein fish flakes, and I crushed it up into a powder and... Yo, what is up? If you like what you see so far and you haven't become a subscriber, please consider becoming a subscriber and hit that thumbs up. The YouTube algorithm guys really, really like to see those thumbs up and they push my um, video further into the YouTube universe where more people can um, enjoy the content. So thank you in advance. And um, and let me show you guys what goes down when that happens. All right, so I got that. Let me, look, look at that. Get it. They're loving it. And of course, I still feed the mother every time I do this because I don't want her getting a little, even a little bit hungry. So let me put some, and her, I'm giving her bug bites, basically. It's it's up there somewhere. See the bug bites? Bug bites. Too big for the babies. 
But they still try and go at it. Let's see. All right, this is my 56 Bowfront. I have three Del Hizzy Bicers. One, uh, um, where is he? Right there. You see the back of him. Rhino Playco. And then my pride and joy. There he is right there. My Cribble Heroes, Busingi, Singai, whatever you want to say. Chris, uh, if you're watching, Busingi. Busingi, Busingi, Busingi. Anyway, he's really skittish. He recently just started being not so skittish, but you can tell, you know, me just being here, he wants to stay to the back in the shadows. This tank is not looking good skate wise because it is going to be moving from here. And in order for me to move it, I need to tear it completely down. So I'm not even bothered scaping it. Um, so but I'm loving the Del Hizzy Bicers. There's three of them in there. I would love to get me some different types of Bicers, but to be honest with you, Bicers at that size are so expensive. Let me tell you about that Busin guy right there. It's a, uh, it's a vicious killer. Central American, Costa Rica. Um, and I'll put it in a tank. He'll hide because he's very, very shy. I've had him for over a year, and this is what I get out of him. If I move closer to the tank, he'll dart. But what he will do is he'll hide and chill for about four, six months, and then come out and kill something. Usually something very expensive. So he's in a tank by himself. He's actually very large from everything I've read about him. He's, uh, I think they say eight inches is the top for this fish. There's not a whole lot of information out there on this fish because uh, it's so new to the hobby. I think it was um, discovered in 1997. So that's fairly new to the hobby and being um, from Costa Rica, it was hard to export, but I got this one from Max back when Max Cichlids was, what is that thing floating? I don't know, some type of debris. But I got it from Max Cichlids when he was up and running. And um, yo, if you made it to this far in the video, thank you. And in appreciation for you making it this far in the video, I want to introduce you to my pusher. huh? The guy in the alley, got what you want. He got what you need. Actually, he's the reason why I got all these fish that I really shouldn't be having right now. He's a, he's a, he's an enabler is what he is. He's a bad influence. He is my channel sponsor. <laughs> um, it's um Dan at Consolidated Fish Farm. I'm gonna go ahead and put a link to a um, to a 10% off entire purchase at Consolidated Fish Farms. But be careful, be careful, because I really do think he gets off on sending me fish or giving me fish for my channel that will force me to do things in the future that is going to be more of a pain in the butt. Be careful with him. You're going to mess around and end up with a whole bunch of fish that need a whole bunch of big tanks. But they're beautiful, though. You can't say no. You be jonesing for it. You know you jonesing for it. You just be itchy. But I need that fish, Dan. Let me get that fish. Everything I've read about this fish, I need, what is that? Oh, I know what it is. It's part of the cage that I put for the sponge filters. And in the back, if you see there, I have two sponge filters, and I put a cage around them because he would pick at it. And I have a, uh, a power head power head right there on top of the sponge filter so and I have the the water the water is shooting out in this direction and then coming around so it causes like a little um current you know in a, almost in a, like in a circular pattern but not too hard at any rate very rare fish right there very hard to find information on it I feed this tank a combination of sinking pellets um veggie wafers sinking veggie wafers um floating stuff all, all kinds of stuff and they all love it as you I mean see if I can get real close up on this right here all right the bicers living large and in charge the rhino placo is my favorite placo to put with cichlids because he doesn't get so big like the um common placo it will change color patterns it does have a very long dorsal fin let me see if i get a better look very long dorsal fin it does have a what looks like a little rhino's horn on the top on the front of his face but they're they don't like i said they don't get that big all right that's a good shot um they don't get that big they cause no trouble and they are Attainable. They're not so rare in the hobby that you can never get it. But that's him right there. Look, look see? Doesn't cause no trouble. But hey, look at this good shot of the machine guy. Alright, and this is my 45 dirted planet tank. And originally, okay, so let me tell you about this tank. This tank started out as an experiment with dirty tanks, and I wanted to do a planet tank because I use this tank when I do my live streams. Um, every uh, Saturday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I wanted something back there. Pretty look, that is actually the dirt farting. You saw the dirt farting? Um, <laughs> I'll tell you about that in a sec. So anyway, this dirty tank um, was more for um, curiosity on my part and something really pretty for you guys to see in the background as I live stream. And I had angels and discus and tetras and, you know, all the 
uh, token, uh, gratuitous planted tank fish. And uh, to be honest with you, I got bored with the fish and I wanted to try something different. And about that time, well, I say about that time so far, um, messing around with the Central American cichlids, um, uh, I, uh, and I will show you the fish in a second. Actually, let me get a little closer. Um, they're, they're being skittish. I might have to come back and get some B-roll on this one. But, right, so that's the... So anyway, um, messing with the Central American cichlids, I have issues with tank aggression, right? But it's not just tank aggression. It, it, it takes a while. Like, they, they'll, they'll be aggressive after four to six months of being peaceful. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do some B-roll. But, um, so I got rid of them and I, I put a Jack Dempsey in here, my electric blue Jack Dempsey, because if that electric blue Jack Dempsey gets killed, my old lady will kill me. That's her favorite fish. So I put him in here and I got rid of those other fish and, uh, I had an elect, I had a, uh, way back when I had a Jack Dempsey that was an electric blue and pink Jack Dempsey crossbreed with a beautiful fish and it got killed because of Central American tank aggression. So I was gonna be like, oh, I gotta wait till I get another one, but I really can't wait. So what I did was I had my electric blue, I got me a pink. I got me a pink. And I'm gonna try and breed that um that 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 um color form morph myself. And there is a Cory cat. This Cory cat is the leftover from when I had all those other fish in there. And to be honest with you, he's just too smart. He's just too smart. And in order for me to catch him, I would literally have to take out every plant. So guess what? That Cory cat, um, yeah, he stays. Alright, and this is my 75 gallon right here. Um, I have my who's up here? That's my black umby right there. I got a Cuban, I got a Cribble Harris Alfari. I got that. That's that male yellow fire mouth. See how beat up he got that that female did to him. See what she did to him? She whooped his butt. Um, I have another Cribble Harris. Um, I want to forget the name of that one. Um, but he's got a little thin nippage. This is a uh, this tank is crazy because I get random aggression bouts every couple of months for no reason. That's my Cribble Harris um, Robert Sonai right there. Royal Placo in there. See, oh, that's the Melanora Vieja Melanora. Beautiful fish, but I think that's the main killer. So I've been holding off on getting rid of her, but it's getting. It's getting to the point where I just, I don't know. I got my four lined Pictus right there. Great catfish for um, for uh, Central American cichlids because he don't put up with no mess, but he don't cause no trouble. And of course, another um, Rhino Placo. Let me, let me put some food in here. Hold on, let me get the food. All right, so I got the food. Let me slowly put it in here. They're not food shy at all. Nobody in here really is all that food shy. That black umby is growing tremendously. That one right there, I um, definitely got to make some plans um, on getting a new tank for that. I'm gonna put some food on this side. And this is a mix of uh, different types of foods and they eat all of it. But I need to do that, some floating, some sinking because, um, what's that, what's, what are you? Oh, that's that yellow fire mouth. Yeah, he's coming out of there. He's getting put in that thing. And I need to get that carcass out. I do have a pike in here. Where's that pike? There's, a, there's, there's another pike in here. It's a red pike. I forget the name of it. It's got a cool name and it gets red. Where are you, pike? Where are you? Oh, there it is hiding right back there. There's the, this dude. Rhino Placo. See, this one's a different shade than the other one. Let's look at that cube a little closer. Oh, see, it was a catfish. I love this, I love this fish. You can see why it's been hard for me to get rid of it, but um, I believe it's female because at this size she should, if it was a male, would have a nuchal hump, but he doesn't. Um, the black umby, I don't know if it's a male or a female because he's he or she is in there by itself, so its colors aren't really defined. Look, look at what that female did to his fin. Yeah, I'm digging this tank. But plans are being made. I can't, God, what is your name? I forget you. It's a Cribble Heroes. Um, la, la, it starts with an L. Um, and it has, I see you have some food nippage too. Look at that, look at that black on beat. All right guys, I suck butt, really. Um, I took the female out of here and I forgot to hit uh, the play button. Um, and it was a pain in the butt to take the female out of here while holding this camera, all for nothing. But she's not in here no more. She is over here, she's right here. And you can't see her because she is literally hiding behind that sponge filter right there. I have to put the mail in here also. Why is this focusing all crazy? Let me see if I did this. All right, so I have to put the mail in here, but uh, to be honest with you, I don't feel like chasing them around. So I'm gonna do it tomorrow because it's late. Uh, chasing that fish around that tank is gonna be a pain in the butt. I'm also, because she's gonna be in there for a day prior and he already has some damage, I'm gonna throw some fake leaves and some fake plants, some plastic plants, and I'm gonna put her, uh, that yellow bowl 
that yellow flower pot and put that in there and maybe they come out with fry another time but for right now these fry are gonna be in here for the now I noticed some of these fry are way smaller than the others and to be honest with you um, I imagine half of these fish these little baby fry are gonna end up killing the other half which in my personal opinion is fine because if uh, nature has a way of weeding out the weak and I would hate to send somebody a weak fish so you know, I'm gonna let nature take its course and the strongest will survive. And from those um, survivors, those strong ones, um, I'm gonna be finding a way to get it out to um, my channel members. Um, maybe I can get out some of y'all who are not channel members, but yeah. So that's all my tanks. First time doing a video like this. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope maybe you saw some fish you didn't realize existed or haven't seen in a while. And um, see you on the next one. Hey, dumb it! <laughs>